St. Louis, Missouri, December 12, 1947. Uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad was in the Army for five years, and he retired from the post office. Vietnam. November 6, 1967, and I got out in November of 69. I was drafted. Yes, I kept my mouth shut an awful lot and I lost all my hair. And you didn't know what was going to happen. And it was uh, November and it was starting to get cold. I went to Fort Leonard Wood. Spent eight weeks in Fort Leonard Wood. I was in the 25th Infantry, I was in the 1st Battalion of the 27th Infantry, Delta Company, stationed at Coochie, Vietnam, 68 and 69. <clears throat> it was probably about uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, it was dark, and they hustled us off the buses and into a barracks. And Probably slept a couple hours and they got us up and started uh, cutting our hair and measuring us up for uniforms. Boots and then they give you shots. My job assignment, I went from Fort Leonard Wood, I went to Fort Polk, Louisiana, that's advanced infantry training. I was uh, an infantryman, I was a rifleman to start. And uh, went too many months or so in Vietnam, I took over the M60 machine gun. And I became a radio operator for my platoon leader, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Corley. Most memorable, I think, uh, when we got a goodie package from home, my family had gotten together a whole bunch of stuff, and we all shared everything, and we opened it up, threw the cookies around and everything, and there was a round thing like this wrapped in newspaper. It was a baseball, and uh, we took it out. And we didn't have a bat or anything, but uh, we had a big engineer stick. We broke it in half. It was probably eight foot long. We used it for the bat, and we beat the heck out of the ball. <laughs> And all the little kids over there were looking like, what are they doing? But it was, uh, we all grew up playing baseball. And we were playing it in Vietnam. I got a Purple Heart. I had uh, the Army Commendation Medal with Valor. And that's basically it. Did I send a lot of messages home? No. Sure didn't. Uh, I think when I first got there, I wrote a couple letters. Uh, I received a lot of letters from home, but it was it was hard writing back. Um, some guys got in trouble for not writing home. So it was hard to talk about what was going on over there. Food? <laughs> well, when I went over to Vietnam, I weighed 190 pounds. 90 days later, I weighed 145. And it wasn't all from the heat, I just couldn't eat the food. And we ate sea rations. And they tried to get us, uh, when we were in the field, they tried to get us, get us at least one hot meal. And uh, they came out by chopper. Uh, when you got hungry, you got hungry, you had to eat something. Sea rations are not good. <laughs> <laughs> Do I feel pressure during the war? Yeah, or? yeah there's a lot of pressure. Um, you didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, when I first got there, they made me walk plank, which I didn't know what I was doing. And I'm surprised that I 
survive that. And there was everyday pressure, then the pressure at night too, because you didn't know what was going to happen. Uh, when I left to go to Vietnam, my grandma gave me a silver dollar, 1921 silver dollar. And she said, when you get home, give it back to me. But when I finally came home, I gave it back to her, and she says, no, keep it. It's been in my wallet for 45 years. Now, right now, I don't have it. That same silver dollar has been given to an Army veteran who went to Afghanistan, brought it back to me, <clears throat> and I gave it to another one. He's still on tour over here right now. I hope to get it back. The coin's probably got, I don't know how many miles it's got on it, but it's got a lot. We tried to play cars, but uh, it was hard to do in the rainy season. Yeah. Uh, there really wasn't much entertainment. It was just telling stories to your buddies. And uh, that was it. There was any the infantry that you didn't, you didn't have a whole lot of entertainment at all. I went from Leonardwood, Fort Leonardwood, Missouri, to Fort Polk, Louisiana, back home, to California, to Japan, no, to Alaska, then on over to Korea, then to, I landed in uh, Tonsonut Air Base in Vietnam. Coming back, I came from Tonsonut straight into San Francisco and Houston back to St. Louis. But other than that, I, I did have R&R &R in Hawaii, and I got to see my wife there for seven days, I guess it was. That's, mine was strictly Vietnam and back home. Probably what the kids laughing at us when we were playing baseball was uh, humorous, no, um, I can't remember a whole lot of things that were humorous, except me. <laughs> I had to, that's how I coped, is I made jokes out of everything. So, if you want to call that humorous, that's, that's my way of dealing with things and pressure was making light of it and trying to make a story or a joke out of it. It was at Fort Leonard Wood, and we got one last paycheck, and all the guys were in a hurry to get out of there, and one guy come running out of the building, I was still in line getting my, waiting for my pay, and he got in his car, and he'd come flying around the building, waving goodbye to everybody, and ran right into a telephone pole. And needless to say, he, <laughs> He didn't get off post that day to have to take him to the hospital, but he was so excited to get out. I went back to school. It didn't last long. Uh, at that time, during the Vietnam War, that was uh, a lot of people against it, and uh, they didn't like people like me in, in the school. Uh, they had a moratorium day here in the St. Louis area, and that basically ended my college career at that time, because they tried to do things with our flag that I, I wasn't about to let them do, and I got a ring at school with me. We, we took care of the situation, and we weren't like very much after that. Yes, I got, uh, I got Tom, he lives in Connecticut, Scotty lives in Upper New York, and my good buddy Paul lives in Detroit, outside of Detroit, and uh, me and him bet on the World Series in 1968. In the first game of the World Series at that time, the only thing I had at all was a little radio. And me and him listened to the first uh, 
World Series game where Gibson struck out 17 Tigers. He got mad, broke the radio. Didn't see him for 32, 33 years after that because the very next night they sent us out on a night patrol. They split us. Paul went one way, I went the other way, and he got shot in the butt. Never seen him again until 32 years later where I uh, paid off my World Series debt, which was an unused ticket to Game 7 of the World Series. I found that out a state sale. I belong to the Vietnam Veterans of America. I'm a life member of uh, VFW. I'm a life member of the DAB, and I am five years at this Legion post right here, and this, this feels, uh, this is my home. We do a lot of good things up here, help the community. And uh, as you can see, I'm dressed up. We went and did uh, funeral honors over at the National Cemetery today, and it makes you feel good to do it. is uh, something that you don't want to do. Uh, you have to believe in it. Uh, a lot of things can go wrong and you can get hurt real easy. You can get hurt physically, you can get hurt mentally. And sometimes you just have to do it. If you want our freedoms at home, Sometimes you have to go out and stop what's going on in the world so we can continue to live as free people here. So, war is not good, but sometimes it's necessary. Some things, it made me kind of nervous. Uh, after school, I, I got a job. I had a hard time concentrating sometimes. Uh, the Vietnam veteran had to stay really busy. All the guys I know, they just, if you could work overtime, you worked overtime just to keep busy. Because uh, you didn't want your mind to go back on some of the things that you, you did. Uh, yeah, it, it, it affects you in many ways. Sometimes some things will take 20 years or 25 years to come and raise up inside of you. And that's why, with all the veterans we got now serving all these tours overseas now, we need to keep an eye on these guys and make sure that they get the treatment they need it. And not wait years down the road, but get them taken care of right off the beginning. I think they're making some strides in doing that the way that they're, when they get discharged now, they go through different courses. And uh, I talked to a couple of them myself. And, try to guide them and do the right things. 